Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the IDB, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the 56th meeting of the Network of Central Banks and Finance Ministry of Latin American and the Caribbean. It is so nice to see so many familiar faces. It is the second year in a row that we do this event in a hybrid manner. And your participation, it's what is making it every time more powerful, more impactful, and now for 25 years. As all you know, we are facing extraordinary challenges globally and overlapping risks. And certainly, Latin American and the Caribbean are not the exception. I believe that extraordinary challenges call for extraordinary commitments, extraordinary leaderships, but this means making tough decisions that prioritize the impact they will have on the lives of our people. This means putting people before politics, putting people before our own personal agendas. It is a big responsibility. As the world economy was recovering from the devastating impact of COVID-19, Russia's war on Ukraine generated new significant challenges, including a sharp increase in commodity prices and a slowdown in growth. This is why today's discussion are so relevant. Your presence here, it is so important to put forward the remarkable expertise and experience to address these unprecedented times, these unprecedented challenges. I believe neither of us have prepared for this. I believe neither of us have lived this before. Since the conflict began, we have seen downward corrections to some commodity prices, but others remain very high, such as oil, soybeans. On average, this increase will have a positive effect on growth in our region this year, but the impacts vary across countries. The IMF just projected GDP growth at 3.5% percent in 2022, a decrease from 7% in 2021. Across the board, growth forecasts for 2023 have been revisited and have been revised to 1.7% as policy dilemmas intensify. At this projected growth rate, the region will continue to lose its share in global GDP and will affect the aspirations and expectations of our citizens. Probably the greatest challenge for the world economy is to combat increasing inflationary pressures. Across Latin America and the Caribbean, skyrocketing prices for basic goods and are linked to primary supply factors and less to monetary aspects associated with high demand. One risk is that inflation expectation spirals out of control, making it more difficult to reverse the trend and possibly requiring more aggressive monetary adjustments. This presents a challenge for policymakers and for each one of you who are here today, while well, there are limits for what monetary policy can do on their current context, let's remember that expectations cannot take a life on their own. So what really worries me today is that inflation has a disproportionately effect, negative effect on the poor who have the fewest tool 
to combat it. So our estimate indicates that um, in a scenario of a 20% increase in, um, in food prices will generate 9.5 million people falling into poverty in the region. I repeat, an additional 9.5 million people in poverty. And to have it in context, this is bigger than the population in New York, in New York City. So this is not acceptable. It's not acceptable for me. And we should do everything in our power to avoid this. And the good news, I believe, is that we can do it. Policy makers have tried to mitigate the impact of high inflation via, trans via transfers and subsidies. Still, there is limited space for fiscal expansion because debt levels have already increased. They increased during pandemic, they are continuing increasing. So there's no room for this. And that's, that adds another dilemma to the one in the room and to all of us is control public spending. We need to be more efficient in public spending. A cash transfer large enough to cover the deficit of basic food, large enough to have the basic for, for, for the poor population will mean around $1.3 billion a month or 0.4% of the region's GDP. How do we pay for that? Well, we estimate the region can save around 4% of the GDP by ensuring transfers are only given to those who really need them. And among others, eliminating overpricing in purchases. Cash transfer programs should be expanded also to reach new and vulnerable populations. That, may, that might fall into poverty, like women, migrants, minorities, and group in rural areas that are very hard to reach. And let's not forget the importance of food and nutrition. Programs to guarantee basic food consumption can complement this step. And good targeting will be key to making this happen under current constraints. Today, the region has better instruments to help those who need it. Policymakers should take advantage of the innovative new digital technologies that resulted from the pandemic and use this, um, and use this to assist them, those in need in a, an effective way. And I think you heard me mention it uh, in previous speeches. We cannot take one step backwards. On, on, on digital transformation, on using the tools that we have used and we have been proved to be effective during pandemic. At the same time, we must not lose sight of priorities for long-term growth that is sustainable and inclusive, such as climate financing and social spending. Just last week, Secretary Yellen, Yellen said that climate changes was an existential threat to our planet and called on development bank to boost lending and explore financial innovations. We have new instruments to help ministers better target and measure their public spending on climate action and other instruments to raise more financing on climate related projects. The IDB group has been a pioneer in establishing a green bond market through loans, guarantees, anchor investments, and technical corporations. Today, the IDB and the IDB Invest, our sector arm, have supported 36 clients to issue 74 thematic bonds, including sustainable blue bonds and social. In fact, around 30% of volumes of, of this volume has been issued through us and supported by us in many others. So as you see, we have 
had our own internal challenges also as the IDB. But I want to reassure you today that our commitment to help in Latin America and the Caribbean to realize its full potential is unwavering. And now our work continues to that end, which focus and determination with passion and commitment to make sure that you have the tools to support our region. We will continue leveraging all our financial resources, developing new, more effective approaches and sharing the ex expertise, the experience that we have in our bank for six decades. Today, you can rely on ITB Group to continue supporting all the needs in the region like we have done, as mentioned before, for the past 62 years. And I am very excited, very excited to, to see that these two days, we have a, a great, and I call it a prime opportunity to work together on a smart policy prescriptions and chart the best path forward. We have extraordinary minds in the room and you can bring all your creativity, your experience, your expertise, so we can all navigate this complex uh, land, landscape. But we have to implement reforms necessary to strengthen our economies. You can also share best practices among yourself on what has worked in the region, what has worked for your countries. And you can all have this, this time to, to understand why it didn't work in your country and it didn't work in the other. What can work in your own country from the experiences of, of, of the other uh, colleagues around the table? And this is one of the benefits, one of the, the main uh, objectives of this of these two days. And I wanna I wanna thank Eric Parrado and uh, his amazing team for for organizing this meeting. So I, I really hope you enjoy this time. And when I mean enjoy is like pick on everybody's brain, pick on us and say, hey, can we do something different? Can you help us on this? Take advantage of this opportunity that you have in front of you today. So, Eric, thank you very much. And thank you for taking the time. Um, being here means a lot. It's your service, it's your time, it's your commitment. So thank you for that. Eric, the floor is yours.